Hey guys, The Common Man here. So I've got another unboxing for you today. This just came in the mail yesterday and I was able to hold off opening it up until now. Um, sometimes I just get excited and just want to check it out right away. But uh, this one um, is a very unique design and it's something that, uh, I don't know, I wanted to capture my first impressions of it on camera, make sure I get a video of it. Um, we'll see, like I said, it's very unique. It's very, uh, very innovative. And I'm extremely excited about it. So we'll go ahead and use the uh, good old Spyderco Para 3 to open it up. Right. And I did just recently start uh, putting a couple of lanyards on, on my knives. Not, not all of them, but a couple of knives I've decided. I'm going to try I'm gonna try lanyards for a little bit and see if I like it. Um, looking at different uh, materials and different you know styles to, uh, I guess, this might help pull it out of the pocket. Or it might just get in the way and I might decide I hate it. We'll see. I thought it looked pretty cool. That leather looked pretty sweet against this micarta. So we'll see how that goes. All right. I'll pull this out of here. And I think it is upside down. It is. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's a sweet... That's a cool, cool box. I like that packaging. So, uh, you know, it's not really much of a surprise. It is a, a goat tool, and it's their multi-tool. This was, this is the uh, the locking version. Um, yeah, this one has been out, I think, since mid. I think I, I really, honestly, don't uh, know for sure. I didn't forgot to kind of look into that, but I think it came out mid 2023. I know it was crowdfunded. They had to reach two hundred thousand dollars before they could start production and uh this is not one of the original orders this is not a pre-order this i just ordered uh very recently just from some money that i freed up by getting rid of a couple of other knives um and this one was very much on my radar um as you guys know i'm starting to get into multi-tools a little bit i've got a couple of leathermans now um and it's it's been pretty fun messing around with them i've had multi-tools in the past but uh more recently i've just started to get more more interested in uh, using them for, I guess, EDC tasks and just keeping them around. And you can see, very cool, very clear instructions. That's awesome. Um, I've done a lot of research on this tool, so I think I'm pretty familiar with how the whole system works. But you can see, um, this is equipped with their uh, their swapping kind of technology, which I'm really, really excited to check out. Um, this is going to be a pretty quick review though, guys. Uh, I'm going to upload a full review soon, but this is just, like I said, my first impressions. And so far the packaging is nice, so that's cool. And then uh, that very nice Molly sheath. Very nice, actually. It's pretty sturdy. I like that it comes with the button. No Velcro on that. And then uh, you could use this on a belt loop. You could weave it into your Molly on a vest or a backpack or something like that. And then it does have the Velcro front, which is fine. I prefer a snap on the front just because this Velcro tends to get worn out from, you know, constant use. But uh, I do not plan on carrying this in a sheath. Go ahead and pull the tool out of there. But yeah, really nice. I, I, I like that. And this is very cool. That ram or uh, goat. That goat logo, I guess. Pretty cool. And the tool itself, well protected in a plastic bag. And you can see that I opted to go for the black coated or black anodized, or I'm not quite sure what the coating is, but uh, I wanted to go with the all black version. I loved the look of the white letters against the black. And then I'm big on uh, doing whatever I can to get you know corrosion resistance. That's a big important factor to me for my multi-tools, for my knives. So I'm hoping that this helps with uh, preventing corrosion. You can see really nice striking surface on there. Good and flat. Yeah, that's all. And I believe this is, yes. So this striking surface is just the back end of the plier heads. But overall, first impression, pretty good, pretty solid. Tiny, tiny little bit of play side to side, which is something I always kind of look at with my multi-tools. But not even as much as my uh, Leatherman Arc, honestly, and that's a that thing's twice as expensive as this. So pretty tight. That's nice. Pocket clip looks good. Let's see. That is the knife. Yeah. So I like that. 
Actually, no, hold on. Yeah, that's the knife. Pocket clip is here. I may rotate, I may actually end up, if I can, putting the knife over here. I'd like to pull it out of my pocket and have the knife on this side here, just like you would on a pocket knife. So this is swappable, everything's movable, so that's probably the first thing I'm gonna do. Um, or can you, yeah, that can stay right there, and that's probably what I'll do. I'd like to avoid taking apart the pivots at any at any cost if I can. I, I don't like taking these multi-tools apart unless I absolutely need to. But uh, yeah, I really like that lettering. I think that looks extremely good. The little logo on either side looks great. All the tools seem to be fit in pretty tight. I don't see any big gaps or anything like that. So let's look at the main part of this, which is the plier head. And it is spring-loaded, which I'm, I don't know, I'm not uh, really big on the spring-loaded aspect. Uh, I guess it has to be spring-loaded, though, because these are not, I guess that's another uh, thing I'm not super stoked about. These handles are not locked in place, so you can see. And if it wasn't spring-loaded, they would just kind of start folding up on you. So it being spring-loaded is definitely important considering the construction of this uh, of this tool. And I don't know, we'll see. I might get over that. But uh, now I will say it's extremely smooth. And when you have it open, there is actually, there is almost no wiggle whatsoever. That's a very tight pivot. So I'm really happy about that. It feels very solid. This is all very smooth, good, comfortable on your hands. Doesn't feel like anything's cutting into you. These edges might get you on, in the palm a little bit, but no, I mean, overall that's pretty good. The design of the plier heads is pretty good. Uh, not super, not super fine, but fine enough. Um, this, like I said, this isn't going to be a full review or comparison video or anything, just my initial impressions, but I guess this is kind of relevant. You can see the uh, plier heads are not quite as uh, fine. They're not quite, you know, needle nose, quite like the Leatherman Arc here, which are fairly similar to the uh, Leatherman Wave as well. But uh, like I said, not a full comparison video you know we'll leave that out just for a quick size comparison but uh yeah like i don't love the fact that the pocket clip is right up at the plier head i like this being kind of narrower kind of lower profile up at the plier head so you can squeeze it down into tight areas so it's kind of a bummer that the pocket clip has to be up here and it is the same on the leatherman arc which i also don't love about that but it's a minor thing but it is something that i consider um not going to keep me from buying the tool, but I do wish that uh, maybe there was, you know, some thought put into that where the pocket clip could have been put on the other end like it is on the Wave, I believe. But another thing that, to me, the first thing that I noticed when I saw this tool is the chunky squared off ends of the handle right up here towards the plier heads. Um, it doesn't really affect uh, its function, I don't think, but it looks, just makes it look super blocky. Um, how these just, these big chunky blocked edges are right at the plier heads it's just uh another you know cosmetic thing that i noticed but no big deal um plier heads are not anything too you know pretty or anything they're just big slabs of steel and they do have these uh rotatable cutter heads which that looks pretty good and there is just a little bit of bypass as those close and i'm actually feeling they feel like they might be touching just a hair which is fine. You'd rather them be sliding against each other slightly than having a big gap there because that's going to allow you to be able to cut material as well. Now, one thing that I noticed right away is that there is not a whole lot of distance from the top of that cutter head to the uh, meat of this plier head here. So if you're going to put a material in there, um, there's not a whole lot of room for it to sit in there on either end. And I don't have no I think I just threw away that coat hanger that I was working on but uh, you can see it's not a whole lot of room for the material on either side of that cutting point to slip in so it's probably going to end up squashing your material between the screw and between the uh, edge of this plier head here so that's something to consider I did see a video where someone actually dremeled out some material in there for that for uh, the material you're cutting to kind of sit in there We'll see. We'll see how it works. I'll put it through some use and see how that goes, see if that's an issue. Um, but overall, you know, good shape to the plier heads, good teeth on there. We'll see how hard and how durable those plier heads are. Again, no pivot play, which is awesome. 
yeah, I'm, I'm going to say absolutely no pivot play. The only tiny, tiny bit of movement I'm getting are probably in uh, just these um, pivots where the handles connect to the head. But as far as the actual plier pivot, that is rock solid. So that's that's great. That's very cool. Um, no tools that you access from the open position. All of the tools are going to be accessible uh, while the plier head or the pliers are closed, which is good. That's a good thing. And let's just go ahead and run through the tools really quick. This is, you know, not going to be, like I said, not an in-depth video. We'll just take a look at everything right away. That's a nice lockout. I like that. Oh, boy. And this is stiff. So I know that you have to push. Yeah, wow, that's really stiff. You have to push down on the tools to uh, disengage the lock. And that's a good, solid lockout. And, man, that seems like a nice pair of scissors, too. Pretty robust would have been nice maybe if they were just a little bit lower profile or a little bit uh, thinner. But, yeah, those look like a good, robust pair of scissors. They actually should cut pretty well. And let's see how that goes. Yeah, I mean, that's no problem. Is it? There we go. Try to get that paper to pass through the scissors. Uh, yeah, no issue there that cuts really well so that's good so that means that those uh, scissors are sharp and those edges are riding against each other very nicely all right so scissors are a win i like that so far the only yeah man you really got to push down on those tools to break that to break that lock um next let's see you have to kind of trying to figure out the best way to pull that that uh, screwdriver out of there and you might oh boy <laughs> well we'll talk about that one next i guess that is the um like an exacto knife or like an arts and crafts knife which is very cool because that is swappable you can just get standard knife you know cutters to uh, place in there to replace this one and i do actually think that this is going to be pretty useful i wish that sat in there a little tighter a little bit of back and forth play up and down play and yeah unfortunately some side to side play um a little bit of play in this i would say is acceptable but that's that's a lot of play so i do wish that was a little bit tighter but that's okay I, we'll see we'll see if i use that i'm not 100 percent sure if i will boy this is i really hope that this loosens up because man i almost can't even almost can't even get these tools back in with two hands yeah that's gonna have to that's going to have to break in or something, because that's that's crazy. Um, let's see, best way. Yeah, wow, okay. So everything's just kind of coming out together, so it is very tight. Everything is very tight, so I'll probably go ahead and put some oil in this. There's a little bit of oil I can see, but I'm sure it's going to need some more oil and some breaking in. Uh, this is another thing I'm really excited about the uh, screwdriver. I have no real problem with the Leatherman flat, the, the two-dimensional screwdriver heads or uh, driver bits. Um, I, I think they work just fine, and that has almost no magnetic hold. That's. I saw that that was possibly an issue with this in some of the reviews, but that is actually even less than I imagined. That That just pretty much I'm actually surprised it's not just falling out by doing this. It's held in by almost no, there it is, came right out. So that's going to be an issue. Um, and what did it come with? Two Phillips. I guess that, I'm sure there's a couple of flathead on the other side. We'll see. But it comes with a um, two different size Phillips heads. But, you know, nice thing is it is a quarter inch drive. It is a full three-dimensional bit. And I know that there are bits that you can get. They're going to fit in here even double-sided bits that you can get. So you could have a couple of those in your pocket for some options. Let's see if this, gosh, guys, this is, uh, let's see. This is gonna take some breaking in because that is not, that is not disengaging, like at all. There we go. So you gotta pull that lever up almost to get these these tools to disengage. Ah, oh, geez, okay. <laughs> Oh, that's a, that's, that's rough. Um, like I said, I hope that that breaks in a bit. All right. So here is the knife. And unfortunately, as I, as I open the knife, it's supposed to be one hand operational. It is 
kind of, but the problem is it's pulling up this disengagement lever as I'm opening it. So there's the knife. Nice profile. Uh, grind is not good. Yeah, that's a pretty... That's a pretty crazy grind. It almost looks like there's two grinding angles going on there. Not consistent side to side or front to back. Little little downward dip there. No sharpening choil. It's a multi-tool. It's not going to be a, a high-end knife edge, but, you know, that's... I'd say, honestly, though, that's right about on par with, like, my Leatherman Wave. Pretty similar edge grind on the wave. The arc, it being a very expensive knife, and the Magna Cut, I think they take a little more care on the edge. This knife's edge is much, much more consistent and much uh, more well done than this one. But uh, is it sharp? It feels sharp. Let's see. And it is... Pretty sharp. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, oh, geez, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm not giving it much of a chance because I'm not really holding that, that paper, you know, perfectly, uh, perfectly straight and flat, but a really sharp knife that shouldn't matter too much. I mean, it's cutting. Um, it's not, not overly sharp. It's going to need to be touched up for sure. Maybe even resharpened. I might throw that on my uh, work sharp, the fixed angle sharpener, and really, really fix that edge because it's going to need it. Um, or you just go ahead and go on their website, buy their S35VN blade, which I think that was my original plan to do it. We'll see how I like the, the tool before I go spending the extra $25. But um, that is another option. You buy the, the better uh, blade steel and you just swap it out. Hopefully that edge is done a little bit nicer than this one. Um, it being a nice blade steel, I would imagine so. I hope so. But uh, we'll just keep on moving. Let's see if this side is easier to disengage a little bit. But that is still requiring two hands just to close the tools. And then let's, uh, like I said, I don't want this, this video going too, too long. So we'll get moving along here. Um, I do want to lock each individual tool out, though. And it is clumping. It is clumping like, you know, everyone says it, it would. Uh, so this here is a very wide flathead, which I actually really like. Um, it's also going to be somewhat of an effective pry bar. However, there is very little material on this end here. So if you go twisting or prying, I could see that snapping in a hurry. Uh, I think this is also going to work as a bottle opener. So I will give that a shot too, because if I have a tool with a bottle opener, I will use it. Um, I don't drink a ton, guys, but you know, if I'm carrying something, you know, I, I do have a beer every here, every now and then, and uh, it is nice being able to lift the cap with a, a tool that's already, you know, easily accessible in your pocket. So that is very nice. I'm happy to see that. Let's see. I don't know if it makes sense closing each tool before opening up a new one. I think because of the whole clumping issue, you kind of want them all, kind of want them all out without getting cut here. Yeah, we're gonna speed this up because I wanna get to that uh, that swapping. That uh, I wanna be able to pull one of these bits out to show how it swaps out. But uh, we'll just go over really quick. We've got another flat head here with what looks to be, I don't know if that's supposed to be a wire stripper. I don't think so. I'm not sure what that is. Just a little hook of some sort. Then you got another hex driver. You've got a I think that's a two mil. No, I'm not sure what that is, but that's a hex head. And it is actually, from what I understand, this hex head will work on each, um, each of these, uh, screws. So you can actually take the whole tool apart with this included hex head, which is very cool. It also comes with a reamer slash all, I think they call it a reamer. It also has that little hook and that might actually be to be able to deploy yeah, I think that's so you can actually pull the tool out. I think essentially that's these are just nail nicks. I'm pretty positive that's what these little hooks are, just nail nicks. And then we'll go ahead and open up the uh, the saw, which is actually so far the easiest tool to open. And that locks out very nice. No blade play. I don't think I talked about, we'll get that knife back open and look at the blade play. But 
yeah, the, the saw is solid lockup. No blade play at all. <laughs> Man, that is, that's a serious lockup. That is hard to disengage. And then the knife itself, uh, a little bit of up and down blade play. Side to side is actually less than the up and down. Um, but it feels solid. It feels pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm a little nervous about that locking point there. I think it'd be pretty easy to get that to uh, just disengage unintentionally. So I would not treat this as a solid lockout kind of tool. And I think I did see a video where someone actually was able to get that to fail. So I would just use this like you would a non-locking knife. And this is just going to be a little bit of like a, like a safety backup, I guess you could say. But uh, I plan on using this as I would a non-locking knife, which is kind of a bummer. But I won't know until I really test it, so I'll, I'll report back on that. And while we have this uh, knife blade open, let's go ahead and see how easy it is to swap. So we've got you got to lift these levers. There's one on either side. There's one here and then one here depending on which uh, side you want to access the tools. And then this just pulls out. And then there you go, you have a gap left there. These tools, I think, yeah, they'll all kind of slip around side to side until you put a new tool in there to take its place. But uh, basically this comes right out. So for the, uh, for the hex head, this is very, very nice because you can pull it out, use the hex head on these pivots and then pop it back into the tool. And there you go, it's right where it needs to be. Um, I did see that it's easiest to put the tool down in over here and then slide it into position to kind of get all the other tools out of the way and that pops down in there and then just be careful not to close the knife on your finger and boom there we go very nice i can also see that being very useful for this uh, little hobby blade here we'll go ahead and open this up pull this hobby blade out which is extremely sharp you can take this out of the tool and you can actually use it as a standalone tool which I think I probably would because I do little uh, DIY projects and things that do require a um, like a utility knife. So I absolutely see myself using one of these and the fact that you can just get a pack of these blades and just swap it out easily. It's a big deal and it should save on the knife blade in this tool. Go ahead and put that back in. And yeah, that's a pretty natural process. That's actually very easy to do. Gosh, this thing is hard. Okay. And there we go back together. Um, yeah, overall, guys, this is pretty cool. Uh, there are definitely some little things that I'm going to have to keep an eye on. Um, that lockup is is intense, and it's pretty hard to disengage, so I want to see if that, if that uh, loosens up over time. I'm going to go ahead and drop some oil, maybe fix some of that clumping issue, and uh, I do plan on putting this in my pocket and carrying it for EDC uses uh, in the future, so I will bring a full review to you guys maybe in the next month, couple of months, something like that, and really put this thing to the test. But overall, it's cool. I think the price isn't too bad. Puts it right in line with a lot of Leathermans, maybe even a little bit less than some of their models. And I think it's definitely worth a shot. I'd be interested in seeing if they come up with a, an updated version, fixing some of those little, uh, those little things that uh, might be minor annoyances. But for now, I am actually still pretty excited to put this thing to the test. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you have one of these, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think about it. Um, I'm really interested in seeing other people's inputs because there's not a whole lot of reviews on this thing online. So let me know. And if you want to see more of my videos, please consider subscribing. Thanks.